Hello, this is Danny Ryan, and welcome to the Three Will Podcast. Uh, today, I've got Tim Colson, senior consultant, here with me. Thanks for joining me, Tim. You're welcome. And I have dragged him away. I haven't <laughs> literally dragged, but I've pulled him out of his project because he is, uh, he's been very heads down recently. You've been working really hard. Appreciate that, Tim. Yeah, we've got a pretty fun project going on with uh, doing a lot of work that interests me. I, I love doing UI work, um, kind of that instant gratification of uh, being able to see pretty immediately the, the work you've done and uh, of course customers that's the thing they see you know they don't necessarily uh, appreciate some great uh, c-sharp code on the back end maybe they, <laughs> maybe they appreciate the response time yes. or how uh, efficient it runs or the response uh, it returning back data quickly but uh, with mm -hmm. the UI obviously uh, people can see it and, and you know they'll generally have an opinion one way or the other, either they'll like it or they're not, so you'll get pretty real-time feedback. And So for me, that's a lot of fun, so that's been a big part of my my current project. So uh, it's definitely much easier to work those later hours, longer hours when, uh, you, love what when you're you really doing. love what you're doing. That's so. great. Yeah, it's it's and it's been really a really important uh, topic for us because, you know, I was even on, the, on a phone call today where, um, <laughs> one of the key things that uh, the prospect was talking to us about was, uh, can you guys uh, help it not look like SharePoint? And it come, just comes up time and time again. I think they just want to want to improve uh, branding, improved user experience, uh, and you know, really want a site that that they're proud to send people to. Nothing that you know, SharePoint is SharePoint. It sort of does what it does, and it has a certain look to it, but. I think a lot of people, it's really important for them to brand it and make it their own. Yeah, lately a lot of our, our customers really have wanted, uh, focused on a, a better looking UI. So we've created some extra net sites for some state agencies that uh, a lot of the counties will log into. And, and they really wanted a, a nicely branded interface. So we, were, we did that on the SharePoint platform. My current uh, project, which is actually a tax and accounting support site, uh, where users log in to get product support for some of their cloud-based tools or tools that they install locally. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, essentially rebranding it. We're leaving a lot of the back-end functionality the same, but basically giving it a facelift to make it uh, look nicer. We're adding some some new features, and of course, um, part of that involves a lot, of the, a lot of use of some of the new jQuery plugins, libraries that we can use to, to give some nice-looking uh, Modal pop-ups, uh, some nice looking like sliders where you can have uh, announcements on the front that either automatically rotate or users can click through and uh, see things like that. Tabs, a leveraging bootstrap. Mm -hmm. um, so we give a responsive uh, experience based on the size of the browser. We can hide certain elements when they decrease their screen size or show, show more things or uh, Kind of change it around the interface based on the based on the screen size. So, uh, a lot a lot of uh, new capabilities out there to really provide a, a nice user experience. And I think a lot of customers uh, appreciate that when they go to a site with its uh, more engaging. Uh, some of the I think they they tend to come back more. So that's really what uh, our customers are looking for is a, an easier to use site. So a lot of these new uh, UI paradigms make the navigation a little bit easier and um, also just more more engaging, more more fun to use. So. And you typically work with, we have a, a couple of graphic designers that uh, join us to help us out. What's that interaction like? Are you, are you working, like during a project, you're working a lot up front and then once you get it to a certain place, you're, it's more of you're taking over from there or what to just... Describe how, what your interactions are with them. And usually up front, we'll have some initial meetings with our designer and, and the customer to really try to understand what is their goal for the site. What kind of messaging are they trying to create? What kind of experience are they trying to create for their customers? And then our, um, and some, some companies actually have branding guidelines. So we'll get a copy of those. Some will have those available on the websites. We'll take it, uh, so take a look at those guidelines and, and then kind of integrate, uh, you know, what their guidelines with what the customer wants in terms of, of the user experience. So we'll usually come back with some screen mocks of some ideas of what we could implement, give them some options 
they'll usually say, I like this, I don't like this, and we'll go back. We'll go through two or three rounds of, of some screen mocks to determine you know, what the user likes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at that point, our designer uh, is actually a very talented guy. He will go off and create HTML and CSS and actually deliver the HTML and CSS to me. And then I implement that into the actual uh, design. So a lot of times what the designer might create is static HTML will be driven dynamically based upon data that gets returned. So, uh, so what I'll do is take that and then integrate it into our code base. Very nice. And I know also on projects we have um, uh, QA testers and how does that, what's your interaction with them typically on a project? It, I guess in this case, it's coming more towards the end of the project where where they're going out and testing the UI and what's the, what's a typical interaction with, with them? Yeah, usually we try to get them involved as upfront as possible. That way they, they sort of understand the spirit of the site, what's trying to be accomplished. And then of course they'll, they'll go through the functionality and, and in some cases they'll find where, uh, you know, a button's too big here or something's not in the correct alignment. So they, they'll normally go through their normal QA cycles uh, on the on the branding and, and point out that you know anything they see and then we'll fix it and then we'll go back through some sub- subsequent iterations that way they can can retest things that we fix uh, you know usually after two or three iterations then we you know got it down to little or no uh, defects or things that they that they find wrong before then it you know goes to a customer nice and I guess I know this morning we got together for uh, our monthly company meeting, and Pete said JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript. It seemed like that's a that's the direction that uh, we're moving for implementing a lot of these solutions. So it sounds like you're using a lot of the frameworks to go do a lot of this stuff now. Yeah, we're doing a lot of uh, client side asynchronous calls, uh-huh. so that way the user the page will refresh uh, quickly and then. If there are pieces of data that take longer to retrieve, they'll, those pieces of data will come in as they're retrieved and uh, display in the screen. That way the, the user gets a, a better, quicker experience. Um, it's just uh, just so much out there now that uh, is available to, to really give a rich looking UI. So, um, and you know, we've not only implemented these uh, outside of SharePoint, but even, even within SharePoint, we, uh, leverage jQuery a lot, not only just for purely display things, but uh, for example, SharePoint natively doesn't support field level security. So uh, oftentimes in uh, different lists or document libraries or even document sets, we'll implement jQuery behind the scenes. Uh, You know, we'll make an asynchronous call to determine what role the current user is in. And then based upon that role, we can hide fields or display fields or uh, even change the behavior of the form, uh, not only from a security standpoint, but also uh, sometimes users want some of the more uh, common metaphors for search. So we might uh, take a text box and implement a type ahead search that behind the scenes is going back against another SharePoint list. So instead of using a default SharePoint dropdown, we might provide a text box that has type ahead that behind the scenes is going back. And nice. as the user types, it'll... Um, bring back all the entries that uh, match what they're typing. So, so there's a lot uh, you know you can do with jQuery as you uh, integrate it into SharePoint or even outside of SharePoint. Very nice, very nice. Um, it's probably difficult to stay on top of it. I mean, I think some of these, uh, it seems like there's a framework of the, of the week coming all the time. And I imagine with updated versions of everything, it just seems like you're just trying to stay on top of what frameworks are being put out there and which are the right ones to, to use for whatever project you're on. Yeah. You know, luckily at three, well, we do have a person, Pete, that's focused on, uh, you know, kind of keeping up with what are the new technologies. And we really try to try to narrow that down so that we're not all going after everything, but we really focus uh, in on what we think are sort of the emerging, emerging industry standards. So things like angular JS, uh, jQuery, things like that, TypeScript. Uh, so we're really trying to, to not get too caught up in, you know, there is so much going on that you can kind of get overwhelmed and uh-huh. really 
you know, know a little bit about a lot of things instead of being deeper in a few things. We really try to be deeper and in fewer technologies. So um, really kind of Pete's carrying that burden of uh, researching mm-hmm. and trying to determine what are those emerging technologies that we should focus on. So that, that does help. But even there, there, there's a lot to learn. But, uh, yeah. but that's what makes it fun, you know, just continuing to uh, learn new things. It really provides some uh, nice capability. And I know we're starting to do some, uh, you know, we're starting to actually been doing a lot of work with um, with Office 365. Have you been on any of projects where you're starting to sort of figure out how does the UI and you know, what are the changes as you're looking to, instead of doing on-prem SharePoint, you're doing something in Office 365. How's that change what you do? Yeah, I've done a, a little bit of work, not a lot there, but um, certainly with a, a platform that's constantly changing. I mean, they they pretty much tell you that, uh, you know, you can't rely on certain things to be there from, you know, one day to the next because they are constantly evolving the functionality in Office 365. So actually hanging your code off of certain attributes in a screen, you know, you're not really guaranteed to have that from one day to the next. So they, they do have patterns and practices for, uh, doing branding in Office 365, but uh, generally, in more in the cloud, they, uh, they they tend to you know not really recommend doing a lot of branding type stuff as much as certainly you can do in a in an on premise environment where where you can kind of control that. Very nice. Anything else? Just sort of to wrap this up with uh, maybe tips or anything you've learned recently, or anything you'd want to share with folks about maybe branding or UX in general with uh, SharePoint. I just think uh, you know there's a lot of things you can do with jQuery with some pretty minimal custom code. Uh-huh. A lot of a lot of what I've done for customers to en- enhance the forms has really been all uh, client side JavaScript, which is very easy to uh, include in a page, uh, particularly like in an on premise. Even though we have even done some of that in, in Office 365, but uh, you know, if you don't like the you know, native SharePoint experience, you can certainly enhance it uh, using uh, jQuery libraries. So, uh, you know, check with us and we can, we can tell you what's possible. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time off of, this, off of your project to come and talk with me about this. I know this is a, an important topic and I appreciate you sort of leading up uh, within the group and, and focusing in on more on the, the UI. And, um, yeah, you're absolutely right with uh, customers. I mean... In the end, they just have the experience of working with the app and how important that is. Um, and so thanks for doing a great job with that. And uh, and I'll let you get back to your projects. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.